All right, guys, so this is the fifth section or the fifth lesson so far. So um, we're going to start looking at angles, and you're going to see a lot of similarities with segments. All right, so starting out, we have the definition. So the definition of an angle is an angle is a set of points consisting of two different rays that have the same endpoint called the vertex. Okay, and when you name an angle, you use its vertex, or you're going to use a point on each ray and the vertex. So you're going to use points and a vertex. And if it's using numbers, then you can actually use that number to name it. So we're going to look at these things right here, over here, so we can identify them. So for example, um, this angle has the vertex of A. So point A is the vertex. The sides of this angle, and also please keep in mind um, these little curve arcs, that's how we identify the angles, that's how we mark them. Um, and when I write it, I'm going to write it with, um, I'll show you whenever we get to the naming. So the sides, so let's go back to the sides. So starting with the vertex going out, so this would be ray AC. So ray AC. And then starting back at the vertex, going out the other direction, this would be ray AB. Okay, so two different rays, same end point. Now when I name this, I can name it with the vertex. So I could call this angle A. So I'm using um, the symbol for an angle, and then I'm using this little curve right here um, so that it doesn't look like a less than symbol. That's the only reason. Um, it says to use the points on each ray, so C and B, and the vertex. All you have to do is pick two points and make sure that vertex is your center. So this would be angle C, A, B. You may want to go the other direction, B, A, C. It does not matter as long as your vertex is the one in the center. In this picture, they're calling this angle 1, so I could also say angle 1. I'm going to classify this. They're telling me it's 55 degrees, so that makes it an acute angle. And point D is the interior. Point D is in the interior of the angle. If I had an angle over, I'm sorry, if I had a point out here, this would be the exterior angle. Point D is inside the angle. So if it were an alligator, it would eat it. Okay, so E is exterior, D is interior, A is the vertex, C A is, A C is the ray that makes a side, A B is a ray that makes a side. So now let's talk about classifying angles. All right, so here we have this angle right here. This angle is a small angle, so this is an acute angle. Okay. Acute angles are anywhere between 0 and 90 degrees. So they have to be greater than 0, but they have to be less than 90. This one, when you see the little box right here, that makes it a right angle. And right angles are always equal to 90 on the dot. When they're bigger than that, this is called an obtuse angle. And this is stuff you guys already know. I'm not teaching you this. I'm just reminding you. So 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So this angle has to be uh, greater than 90, but less than 180. And then you have your straight angle. So we have our straight angle here. Our straight angle is straight up equal to 180 degrees. This is also called a line. This is also called a line. All right, so let's get down to some nitty gritty here. All right, so we got number one and number two says to write three names for each angle. So knowing that we can name the angle based on the vertex. So this is angle Q. Or I can use the two points on the arms. So this would be PQR. So angle PQR. Or I can go the other direction. Q, I'm sorry, RQP. So angle R. Q, P. You want to make sure that the vertex is always in the middle. This one here, 
first of all, I see that bright red number one. So this is angle one. Or I can name it by the vertex, angle Y. I can also name it the same way I did here with the three letters, X, Y, Z. So this is angle X, Y, and Z. Or I could go the other direction. I could say angle Z, Y, X. Order does not matter as long as the vertex is in the middle. Okay, this next part here says to name this angle three different ways. Or sorry, name three different angles. So I hope you see three different angles. We have this tiny little angle, E, F, G. So angle E, F, G. Then we have this bigger angle here, which is G, F, H. So angle G, F, H. And then we have the whole thing, which is E, F, H. All right. Now, it's asking, can this, can this angle be named angle F? Well, I can't just say angle F because there are three angle Fs. So you wouldn't know which one I was talking about if I just said, hey, I need you to find angle F. Well, you don't know. That would be like me having three Johns in one class. John who? Because if I said, John, I need you to answer this question, you wouldn't know which John I was speaking to because there are three different ones. So we're going to say, no, angle F is not specific. not specific to just one angle. Okay. So since there are three different angles, we can't just say one. Okay. So you've got this angle. You've got this angle here. So we've got the yellow, the blue, green, and then we've got the entire thing. All right, so let's go over here and talk about congruent. Congruent angles means the same thing as congruent segments. They have to have the same measure. Let me move this out of the way. So two angles are congruent when they have the same measure. So you're going to see that they will have the same tick marks, okay? So there's a curve through here, and then they marked it with these little tick marks. Um, one arc with a hashtag that tells you that those are congruent, or they may just use different arcs, like this one has two arcs and this one has one. As long as they're different, then they're not congruent. If I'm going to identify angles that are congruent to A, D, G, so go to A, D, then G, they're talking about that angle right there. So I need all the angles that have two tick marks. So I see this one has two tick marks. And this one has two tick marks. So B, E, H. And angle C, F, I. So congruent. Just look for your matching tick marks. All right. Angle addition postulate. Just like segment addition, this is part plus part equals whole. Part plus part equals whole. So if P is the interior of angle RST, so P is in the interior, if I were to draw a ray coming out, I know that this angle plus this angle equals the whole angle. So I'm going to say that the measure of angle RSP plus angle PST, so the measure of angle PST is equal to the whole thing. So the measure of angle RST. So you got part plus part equals whole. This part plus this part equals the whole part. Okay, so let's practice that. So here, they want to know, find the measure of angle JKL. JKL. So JKL is the whole thing. You want to go from this to this. So that means you got to add these two things together. You've got angle JKM plus angle MKL 
So JKM is 31. MKL is 85. Together, that is 116. So the whole thing is 116 degrees. Now over here, it says if the measure of RSU, RSU, well, that's the whole thing, RSU. They're telling you the whole thing is 91. So they're telling you the whole thing is 91, and they want you to find this angle right here. This is your unknown. Well, if you already know the whole thing, then you're going to subtract the part you do know. So 69 from 91 is 22. So that means that leftover angle there is 22 degrees. So this is 22 degrees. So when you know both pieces, you're going to add. And when you know the big part and one small part, you subtract. All right, last part here on this is talking about um, a straight angle. So remember that a straight angle is equal to 180 degrees. So that means from here all the way around to here is 180 degrees. So the left part plus the right part is equal to the whole part. So x plus 20 plus x equals 180 degrees. So we saw for x, so x plus x is 2x plus 20 equals 180. Subtract 20 from both sides. 2x equals 160 and divide both sides by 2 x is 80. So what I have found is that x is 80. Now I have to take this number and I have to plug it in. So this is 80 plus 20, which is 100. And this is just 80 because x is 80. So now xwv, so xwv is 80 degrees. And uwv, uwv is 100. And they should add up to 180 because this is a straight angle. Okay. And this next part, here it says find the measure of angle CAD. CAD. Well, CAD is this piece right here. And the measure of BAD. BAD is this big piece right here. So what I know is that both pieces add up to 90 because that tiny little box tells me it's 90. So that means the big part, 5x plus 57, plus the small part, x plus 15, equals the whole part, which is 90. So add your like terms. So you've got 6x, because 5x plus x is 6x. And that does not look like a 6. Let me fix that. And then 57 plus 15 is 72. And that equals 90 degrees. So these two angles add up to 90. So now I'm going to subtract 72. 6x equals 18. And then divide by 6. x is 3. So now that I know that x is 3, I'm going to take and plug it in. So CAD is going to be 3 plus 15. Because we found that x is 3. So that means it is 18 degrees. BAD is 5 times 3 plus 57. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 plus 57 is 72. And those two add up to 90 degrees. All right, here we go. This is the last part. This is our angle bisector, just like a segment bisector. It cuts it into two congruent pieces. So YW, so Ray YW bisects the whole angle. So it's going to bisect angle XYZ so that the top part, so XYW, is congruent to WYZ. And that's how that works, OK? So you take that, basically, this piece right here is where your equal sign is going to go in an equation. So it says that DEF, DEF, so the whole
whole angle is 92. So I'm going to take 92 and I'm going to divide by 2 because it's two equal pieces. This piece equals this piece. So that is 46 degrees. So that means DEG is 46 degrees and GEF is also 46 degrees. So both parts have to add up to 46 degrees. All right, here we go, guys. Last one. All right, QR. So ray QR. So ray QR bisects means it cuts it in half. So that means this piece is equal to this piece. So that means 4x minus 10 is equal to negative 3x plus 130. So don't forget, when they are being bisected, that means two pieces are equal. So I'm going to add this 3x because it's a minus here. So just in case you were wondering. So that gives me 7x minus 10 equals 130. I'm going to add this 10 over here. 7x equals 140, and then I'm going to divide by 7. x is 20. So now that I know that x is 20, pqr, so 4 times 20 minus 10. 4 times 20 is 80. 80 minus 10 is 70 degrees. So this angle is 70. pqs, negative 3 times 20 plus 130. So this is negative 60 plus 130. So 130 minus 60 is also 70 degrees. As they should be because this bisected the whole entire angle. All right, so we will do more practice with this. Make sure you put stars next to anything you don't understand so that you can be sure to ask how to do those particular things when we get to class. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.